Hi, welcome to First Lutheran Church here in Colorado Springs. I'm Pastor Travis Norton, senior pastor here, and we're celebrating Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. So glad that you've joined us for this time and pray that this message blesses you and that you sing along with the hymns and connect with God and the resurrected Christ. We're starting our new sermon series, Breakthrough, the way Jesus helps us break through all sorts of barriers in our life. And of course, today on Easter, we're talking about how Jesus breaks through death. And so we have this breakthrough to life. In the life of our congregation, we're signing people up for small groups that begin in May. If you'd like to join any of those small groups, go to our website, flccs.net, and just find the ministries button and you'll see the adult groups and you can sign up there. Also, uh, save the date for Vacation Bible School this summer, June 13th through 17th. We'd love to have you join us for that, and you can find all that information on the website as well. But let's prepare our hearts for this time of worship as we pray. Father, we thank you for Easter. We thank you for the resurrection of Jesus and the life that he gives us. Help us to lean into that life, that we would not be afraid of anything that comes against us, because you've already overcome death. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. 
Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. How's life? How's your life going? Are you where you expected to be at this point in your life? Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you enjoying life? How do you answer that question? It's, a, it's kind of a throwaway greeting that we ask when we haven't seen someone for a while. How's life? And usually they respond, life's fine, life's good. When I see my brothers who I don't see very often, that's always the question we ask, how's life? And the answer is usually, life's good, and then we move on. But today I want to ask you a second time, not as a throwaway question, the throwaway greeting, but as a sincere question. How's your life? Good. <laughs> you know, when you're a kid, life is always good, right? I mean, you come to church, they give you treats. There was an Easter egg hunt yesterday. How many kids opened chocolate this morning? I mean, I do everything for my kids, and so life is good for them. They have it easy. But when we get older, we start having responsibilities, and people have expectations of us. Go to college, get a job, get married, get a house. Is that life? When you're a little older, when you're my age, I'm 45, and someone asks the question, how's life? It's hard to answer because people my age are, have so many responsibilities, we're so busy that we don't have time to think about the answer. It's hard to figure out if your life is good when you're changing diapers or going to work or cleaning a house or paying bills. My life is good if there's a new season of Bridgerton or The Mandalorian on TV. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> if I get the wordle in under three, then life is really good. But is that life? When I visit people in the last years of their life and I ask the question, how's life? They always talk to me about their health and their family. And I think those two things maybe get closest to what we mean by life. Easter is often a time when we gather our loved ones together. It's a time of celebrating life. But here's the truth about life. It doesn't always go as planned. It's never ideal. Every life has its hardships. Every life has its difficulties. There are disruptions that get in the way of life, things that just don't go right. There are tragedies in life. We make bad decisions. We make mistakes. We have bad luck. We get sick, and we die. Life is good, but life is also hard, and it is marked by death. When the women went to that tomb on a Sunday morning, they were going to mark the end of a life. They got up early before the sun was even visible in the sky. They took the spices they had prepared per tradition. Their intention was to pay respect to the one who had promised them abundant life. But now that life was gone. Jesus was dead. So they went to honor him as best they could, to give him some dignity in his death, to mourn the loss. They went to the tomb that morning, full of the grief we all carry, trying to keep on living on one hand while holding the grief close in the other. Except when they arrived, the unbelievable had happened. There wasn't a dead man lying in the tomb. Instead, there were two angels in dazzling white ready to greet them and give them news that would change the world. 
Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. The angels reminded the women what Jesus had told them. He told them the Son of Man would be handed over. The Son of Man would suffer. The Son of Man would die. And three days later, the Son of Man will rise again. Jesus said this quite openly to everyone. But no one believed him. No one believed that he was telling the truth. No one believed that someone could come back from the dead. No one believed that Jesus was stronger than death itself. They had all become so accustomed to death and all the disappointment that comes with the disruptions to life that they didn't believe Jesus until that moment in the empty tomb when the words of the angels helped them remember what Jesus had said. These women become the first to fully understand the fullness of the Christian gospel. These women become the first to see that death can be overcome, that sin and evil and suffering and everything that the cross represents can be overcome, had been overcome, that life doesn't have to end in sadness and grief, but that life can endure beyond death, that life can come out on the other side of tragedy. What do you do when you come to that realization? What do you do when you have evidence that changes everything? You tell it. You run and you share the story. You do whatever you can to convince people that on the other side of death is life. They told it to the 11 disciples, the ones still remaining after Judas left the group. They told this incredible news that Jesus was alive, that he had done it, that he had overcome death. And the 11 disciples, what do they do? They doubt it. They don't believe. It seemed to them an idle tale, wishful thinking. They thought the women were making it up. They thought the women just didn't want to accept the hard reality that life ends with death. Resurrection is hard to believe, isn't it? Easter is hard to accept. It's such a fundamental shift in our entire understanding of how this world works that we can't help but resist the good news. But what if Jesus came back? What if death isn't the end? Just in case, Peter got up and ran to the tomb to see for himself. He stooped in and he saw the linen cloths that Jesus has discarded in his resurrection. And he believes, and he was amazed. His entire life transformed in that moment. When the women believed in Jesus' resurrection, they received life. When Peter believed, he received life from Jesus, a life that is more, a life that is more than reaching milestones predetermined by culture, a life that is more than financial stability, a life that is more than a good job, a life that is more than health, a life that is more even than family. Jesus gives life that breaks through death. Do you want this life that Jesus gives? Do you want the kind of life that overcomes even the fiercest obstacle? Jesus spent his entire life trying to give this away. And still he is here in our midst today, offering us this life from Jesus. Not hitting cultural milestones, not following some imaginary path to success. Jesus offers life that is relationship with God. He said it over and over again. Those who want to save their life must lose it for my sake. Those who lose their life for my sake will gain it for eternal life. You remember what he said to the woman at the well as he asked her for a drink of water. He said, if you would have asked me, I would have given you living water that springs up to eternal life. Over and over again, Jesus offers this life to any who will accept it, to any who will believe. 
This past fall, I took uh, my family on a trip to the ocean. We were uh, awarded a make-a-wish trip for our son, Sam, who has a serious heart condition. He loves the water, and so we, we went to the beach, and he sat on the shore, and the water came and, and tickled his toes, and that was enough for him. But my, my six-year-old twin girls wanted to go deeper into the water. But the waves were too strong. If they ventured too far, the waves would knock them over, and so they were afraid. So my wife and I took turns holding their hands and walking them out as deep as they wanted to go into the water. And when the waves would come, the girls would grab on tight to our arms, and sometimes they would giggle with glee and delight as they rose and fell with the waves. Sometimes a wave would slap them in the face, and they would cry. But we still held on, and they were safe. This is what Jesus does for us in this life. He holds on to us. He carries us through the hardships and the disruptions that come, the joys and the sorrows. Jesus holds our hand as we wade through the waters of life. As Christians, we tell the truth. And the truth is that life is hard terrible things happen. There is a war in Ukraine right now, and we've seen the suffering. There are forest fires and wildfires all around our state, and everyone in this room right now is facing something, is going through something. That's life, and believing in Jesus doesn't take away these hardships. What it does is it gives you someone to hold on to and someone who's holding on to you no matter what comes. This life is hard and we are not meant to endure it alone or without power from on high. We are Christians. Jesus rose from the dead and he holds our hand through this life so that when we face the hardship, we are not overcome. We are not carried away. We do not despair. We trust that Jesus will carry us through because Jesus is able to withstand every wave that comes against us and he is able to break through even the wave of death. How's your life going? The answer to that question is simple. He is risen. My life is in Christ. My life is with God. Jesus holds my hand so my life is secure. My life is okay. My life is in good hands. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Jesus holds me tight, and he will carry me through. He is the resurrection. He is the life, and he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We do pray that God spoke to you today through the message. If you want to take next steps, we've created an online course called Basic Training that goes through the basics of the Christian faith uh, step by step. So I encourage you to take that. That's also on this YouTube channel. I encourage you to support this ministry online through your tithes and offerings. You can do that by going to our website, www.flccs.net. And then also in the description of this video, you'll see a link to a connection card. That's a great way to contact us. Let us know if you are moved to come to faith during this time. If you're ready to talk to a pastor about next steps, we'd love to talk to you there. Just let us know that you were here and any comments, we appreciate that. May God bless you as you continue to walk with the Lord.